This is the Galleon 640 Fly. It costs from £1.2 million and if there was a more innovative flybridge boat on the market, I'm yet to see it. This beach mode concept where the sides of the cockpit fold down to create this amazing living space are just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to this boat's party tricks. Let me show you what I mean. Now the beach club concept isn't new for Galleon, they do it on the 500, they even do it on the little 460, but when you have this beam already on the 65 foot boat, these platforms are absolutely extraordinary and the fact that they have glass in them now as well. The only downside is that when they're up, it's a little bit pinched to get down the side decks, but apart from that, they really transform the way this area works. And then you're looking forward into the saloon where you have both sides completely open, those windows slide right back, and then this, of course, which comes up to the ceiling and really opens up what is an enormous galley. There's a huge amount of countertop space there, and it's a really nice way of serving the cockpit. And I think this little area is great as well. This is a really nice seat, somewhere really protected when the boat's moving along, and like now, if you're stern to the sunset, it catches the evening sun. But there's even more innovation up front, so let's go up there. Somewhere where Galleon is really moving the galley on as up here on the foredeck. This piece of technology is extraordinary. The way that this centre of the windscreen slides back and stows itself in the combing forward of the flybridge just transforms the way the boat fits together. The amount of work that must have gone in to make this straight piece of glass fit into this cassette up here is extraordinary. And when it's done, you can simply mosey out and you're up here on the foredeck. And it means you have a straight flow through the boat. And then the foredeck is wonderful as well. As you can see it here, it's in relaxed mode, but you can fold it all down. All the backrests flop down into the lockers in front of them. The tables come right down at the touch of a button as well to become a sump pad. But also these entire units push forward so that you then get a walkway here so that you can easily get from side deck to side deck. It's really clever stuff. And the flybridge on the 640, it's a really big space. It feels like a flybridge from a 75 footer. And there's a really big focus on seating as well. This great big wraparound area here, it extends right to the starboard side. And then you have this massive L-shaped table. So you can genuinely sit your whole crew basically around this great big table and they can have dinner. But then if you just want to sit for drinks, you have this space here. This table goes up and down directly opposite what's a really proper bar area with stools and a grill. Feels far more than just your basic wet bar. And then moving forward, what I like is that you have four forward facing seats when you're going along, but this also flips across so you can go back and face the coffee table. The hard top, that's standard, and you have this electric sunroof over your head as well. For access to cabins from the saloon is not a new thing, but what's interesting about the 640 is that this staircase actually leads to the guest cabins. So down here you have a pair of opposing full beam double cabins, both en suite though, on the forward one the en suite also plays as the day heads. You can actually have four cabins on this boat, in that case the forward uh, cabin here splits in two and you have a pair of twins and that means that the master cabin is located forward. And here it is, and what a cracking cabin it is. There's loads of headroom, nice and easy to move around at the end of the bed and get up into the bed thanks to these steps. There's loads and loads of storage. Any flat panel pretty much has got some storage behind it and there's a big double wardrobe here next to the ensuite. Massive glazing too, big old strip in the ceiling here, nice big windows down both sides so natural light is an issue. The only potential problem is the decor in here isn't gonna suit everybody's taste. Of course you can change it, but this particular one feels a bit busy with the bed head, the woven matting on the door, the infinity mirror, but you can't complain about the quality. Everything feels really solid and there's an especially nice solidity to the doors.
There are two engine options on this boat. There's Volvo Penta D13 1000 horsepower and there's MAN 1200 horsepower engines. We've got the smaller 1000 horsepower motors on this boat and despite that there's still plenty of performance. The hull shape has deep propeller tunnels and then right at the stern you have a little turn down to help give lift and get you onto the plane and you can feel that working. The boat doesn't hang around to get up and moving and we have realistic cruising condition today as well but we have a jet ski on the bathing platform which is about 400 kilograms we have the owner's cruising gear on board so you know that even deep into the season you're likely to get decent performance and we saw just shy of 30 knots today top speed there is a huge amount of glass in this saloon especially up here at the helm where you've got tinted glass above your head you have floor to ceiling glass either side here this is a sliding door so you can nip out onto the side decks pretty easily and of course you have this boat's piste de resistance which is the central sliding window pane that slides back and up and allows you to walk through to the fore deck and what that means is that you do get a three-piece windscreen and quite large mullions obviously there's a hell of a lot in that mechanism to make that work and you have to house it somewhere and unfortunately that's in the middle of the windscreen but what is good is how good the view is aft because you haven't got a tall galley unit behind you or anything like that that's way aft you can see all around from the helm really clear sight lines looking to port and starboard very easy boat to see out of when you're moving along quickly and I like the helm station as well it's really clear and concise everything's nice and close you have this nice mix of three massive digital screens and then the good old analog Volvo dials up there at the top nice and quick and easy to, to reference if you need them the only complaint I have is that as comfortable as these fab peasants only chairs are if you sit back in them you're a long way from the dash and yes they adjust back rests adjust but you can't actually get yourself that close to the helm only flying the ointment down here at the lower helm things are better up here at the flybridge helm though where everything is that bit closer towards you you have your throttles right by your knee the wheel is much closer and you can easily interact with the dash which like downstairs has a nice mix of the digital and the analog the only thing we found up here is that at full speed certainly at the higher speeds it is quite blustery the windscreen is a long way away from you and there is no deflector on this bit of the dash but it's fine when you're at the cruising speed the most comfortable cruising speed which is sort of 22 to 23 knots Clearly there is a huge amount going on in this boat, but what's most impressive is that doesn't affect the day-to-day -day workings of it as a boat. It's still very practical and dynamically it's brilliant as well. I've been walking around the boat all day thinking everything does something on this boat. They haven't let one panel go to waste. They're thinking about every little inch and how life can be made more enjoyable for the owner. Galleon call this a game changer and on this evidence it's hard to argue with that.